Okay, so let's look at this uh, population genetics and what we're going to learn in the population genetics. So what we need to learn here is to explain how selections, selections we have done. So we're gonna, we are not going to talk about this in detail about how selections change the allele frequency, but we are going to look at the Fowler effect and also the genetic drift may affect the allele frequency in the populations. And because of the next subtopic, I'm going to talk about the gene flow as well. How gene flow can change the allele frequency in the population, eh? may affect the allele frequency. And next, we're going to look at hardy Winberg principle. This is a very old principle to calculate allele, genotypes, and phenotype frequency in the populations. And we need to explain why sometimes this principle does not apply, why we cannot apply this principle. Okay, and what is the use of this hardy Winberg principle? Okay, uh, so we're going to start with the concept of gene pool. We keep on talking about a gene pool. A gene pool. So what is gene pool? Gene pool basically eh, is a group of individuals of the same species. So it means that we don't compare humans and chimpanzee, humans and elephants. They must be the same species. They are eh, the populations. Okay, yeah. Uh, so they may interbreed freely living in a habitat or a clearly defined geographical area. So it means that they must be able to interbreed freely. Okay, so you cannot say that, okay, uh, populations consist of uh, humans and also tiger, cannot tiger eat a human. Okay, so it's not a population. Population, they must be the same species. So within these populations, they will have their own gene pool. Okay. They must have their own gene pool. So what is mean gene pool? Gene pool actually is the sum total of all genes and their different allele. So if this is a gene pool for human, then you can see that inside you have many set. So this is the allele for blood group. Oh, this is allele for hemoglobin. Then this is allele for uh, okay, uh, protein A. Oh, this is allele for the thyroxinase, for example. So it means that you have a lot, a lot of the gene within this human gene pool, and each gene it will have the allele. So we have dominant allele, for example, IA, we have dominant allele, IB, then have IO inside. So this is means by the gene pool. So each allele will contribute the percentage inside that particular gene, okay, uh, or allele frequency. Okay, so a population with continuously eh, changing the gene pool from one generation to another, it gives us the idea that evolutionary changes take place because we want to adapt to the new environment, so therefore they have to change. Okay, if there's no disturbing factor, basically uh, the environmental factor is fairly stable, they do not change, then the gene pool is said to reach what we call the genetic equilibrium, unless there is a change of the environmental factor. Okay, so what's the population genetics? Population genetics actually is a study of inherited variations among the group of the organism of the same species. So previously we talked about the genetic of a person. Okay, uh, this uh, plants give us a green seed. Oh, this plant give us a yellow seed. But now we look at a population genetics. So entire gene, gene pool, what are the alleles that are available? What are the the, the, the gene available for us to study. So those we call as a population genetics. Okay, so inside the gene pool, we have the allele. So what are the allele frequency? This is very important for allele frequency. Allele frequency is the ratio of the given allele in a population relative to all the other allele of the genes at the same locus. So what's this mean? So just now we talked about blood group, right? So blood group, we have IA, IB, IO. So what is the percentage? So what are the probability in this gene pool? Are you clear? So particularly, we compare IA and IB and IO. So basically IA, let's say 30%, IB, 30%, IO, 40%. So those means that they are allele frequency. Okay. So allele frequency in the population can be affected by few reasons. Selections we have done. So it can be natural selections. It can be artificial selection doesn't matter it confirm going to change eh? going to change the 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 allele frequency okay second is by genetic drift so this genetic drift in our syllabus we're going to focus on the folder effect bottleneck effect not in our syllabus okay bottleneck effect not in the syllabus for informations only 
but question did come out before again okay, talking about this bottleneck effect and the last one is gene flow which is again not in this topic syllabus because gene flow is very very important Okay, when we talk about the speciations, how the new species take place when there is no gene flow. So we're going to start it with the genetic drift. First, the founder effect. So what's the founder effect? Founder means that the one that developed the new okay, uh, regions. Let's say, for example, if you look at this, genetic drift, okay, take place. Means that, look at, the, uh, look at this. So these populations, we call ancestral population. Okay, this one become a founder population. What will happen here is you look at it. If let's say orange color and also the orange color and also the black color fly to these new regions and set up a new population, you will realize that when they set up population, the new populations, their allele frequency will be totally different from the original ancestral populations. Okay, the same concept here is, if this is the island with blood group A, B, O, and AB, this is a new island, this original, this is a new island. So if some of them migrate, let's say blood group O migrate, blood group B migrate to this island. So, okay. A stay here, A, B stay here. It means due to chance, like by chance, we do not know. A, we do not know it by chance. Okay, let's say A, uh, O and B go and new. <coughs> Sorry. Go to the new area and start the new population. Then we know that in this case, okay, I, B allele will be high. I, O allele will be high. Clear or not? Okay, but there is no I, A allele. Can I see that? No I, A allele present in this new because they set up a new uh, well, for the founder populations with the group B and group O. So therefore, you can see that the allele frequency in the original and the new area will be totally different. So this we call it the founder effect. Okay, so genetic drift is a chance, is a change in the allele frequency that occur by chance. Okay, because only some of the organism of each generation reproduce. In this case, can you see the move and this one be produced. The rest reproduce in their own way, but uh, on, on uh, regions, but new regions, you can see that only some of them reproduce. So the founder effect occur when a small population is isolated or dispersed from the larger main population. So the founding populations or founder populations that start with a small number of the pioneer individual is likely to have a gene pool which is not representative of the original population. So there may be a loss of some allele from the new populations. So the barrier that results in the separation of population can be physical or behavioral. For example, physical, behavioral, basically they cannot recognize each other. So then they won't interbreed. Okay, this one we're going to learn again in the speciations. Okay, next subtopics. Okay. For example, the founder effect is the right, eh, retinitis pigmentosa. Okay, in a settlement of the Tristan the that uh the Chunha. What happened here is one of the early colonies appear uh, apparently carried a recessive allele for retinitis pigmentosa. So what means retinitis pigmentosa? Basically, progressive form of blindness. You can see that the visions, our vision will be all. But retinitis pigmentosa only can see at the middle or side a little bit. So this case, okay. So one of the early colonies I have this recessive allele and they continue to inbreed, right? Okay, within the same populations. Therefore, the, the uh, homozygous individual will give this, will have this effect. Can I see that? Okay, so out of the founding colony, 240 descendants on the islands in the late 1960, four of them will have the pigmentosa, which is 10 times higher compared from the original population where the founder come from. So it means that this is a founder effect. Why? Because a small population, they carry a recessive allele and continue to set up new populations because of inbreed, therefore they get the disease. So out of 240, four of them. And this will say, oh, four, other, four out of 240 is not so high, right? But you look at this, it's 10 times higher compared to the original uh, locations where this founder actually came from. Okay, so the first effect we have done, so we talk about founder effect. 
Now look at the bottleneck effect. What is bottleneck effects? Bottleneck effect basically due to a sudden drastic de decrease in the population due to the adverse environmental factor. And very, very important in this case, we talk about they are killed unselectively. It means that we don't choose a particular variation to kill, but we only, I mean, are randomly killed. Are you clear? So most likely it because of the natural disaster or due to the human's activity, such as hunting, logging, and kill, I mean, the majority of the population, leaving some of them survive. Are you clear? Leaving some of them survive. So this, some of them, this time of them, when they survive, they continue to reproduce. But you can see that after they reproduce for many, many generations, they won't be able to achieve back the original gene pool anymore. So this one we call as a bottleneck effect. Only a lot of particular types of allele to continue. So that's why we say that bottleneck effects take place. So what is the example? So this is the northern uh, elephant seal. A reduced uh, genetic variation because of the hunting. Humans actually hunt for them. So therefore, their number decreased to about 20 individuals only. So even though conservation, uh, conservative uh, process or uh, conservation have been done, but the, they rebound to about 30,000. But if you check that uh, allele, the gene pool actually show very, very low in variation. Okay? Very, very low in variation. So it's a carry the mark of the bottleneck. Are you clear? So it means that if you check this and compare to original one, their gene pool much more, it show much more smaller in terms of the variations. Okay. So if you compare how we gain back, how we can gain back these uh, variations is through mutation, but mutation take long period of times. Okay. So after population has gone through a period greatly reduced in size, there is a decreased genetic variation in the population, even later increase in the size because mutations is a slow process. Okay, random mutation is a slow process to increase back the, uh, it's a random, it's a spontaneous, but slow process right, to increase back the genetic variations. So the last one, you look at the gene flow, eh? the gene flow. So gene flow actually, uh, is the migrations or the uh, or mating of individual between the population, which cause a corresponding movements of the allele. So therefore, they will change the allele frequency. Uh. So gene flow actually increase uh, in, uh, can increase the variations within the population by introductions of new allele that were produced by mutation in other population. So continued gene flow among very uh, population tends to make the gene pool more similar among the population. So reduce the diversity prevents the speciation take place, okay? Now, this one a bit confused, but generally what happened here is this is a one-way gene flow, okay? What we're going to look at later will be the two-way gene flow. So we're going to look at what is mean by gene flow now, okay? Now, look at this. I have the population A. I have the population B. If population A, let's say uh, the skin pigmentations okay, of the particular insect, for example, blue color. Okay, because inbreeding, so all blue color. Another population B, let's say red color. Okay, the, 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 the skin pigmentation of animal, okay? Not inside, like, I mean animal, let's say red color. So can you see that if you compare within the population, do you realize that there is low in variation? Come on, all blue, very low. In this case, all red, very low. Can you see that? If that is no gene flow, huh? no gene flow, no migration, no interbreed between two of them. Are you clear? So very low. And if you compare between population, you compare between these two populations, 
they have very high okay in term of diversity of gene pool Correct or not? two totally different populations can i see that same species but two totally they have high diversity can i see that why is it high diversity because one blue okay one red so diversity high in term of diversity okay now if gene follow take place If gene flow take place, it through I means a way, okay? Gene flow. What will happen here is there is a mixture. You can see that original blue populations. Because of the gene flow, you have the reds coming in. Blue go on, right? To another way, and with the red. Can I see that? So in this case, if you check, if there is a gene flow, the allele frequency will change, cannot. That's how blue allele now together with the red allele. Another one is a blue allele with the red allele. Initially, why high, high diversity? Because here only have blue allele, here only have red allele. But now you can see that if you check within the populations of the gene flow, you can see that now, high in variation. Why I say high? Because not only one blue color, they have the red color some more. Can I see that? Within the populations, they increase in terms of variation. Are you clear? But between population, between populations, you can see that low in diversity. No different, right? If you look at this, I have blue, I have red. Here also I have blue, I have red. So low in diversity. So low in diversity actually reduce the chances of speciation. Now what is this speciation? Speciation basically means that the development of new species. Are you clear? So we're going to look at this in more detail next subtopics when we talk about how the, the speciation takes place because no constant gene flow. So always remember gene flow can change the allele frequency. Why? If you look at this, huh, probability for blue color, 100%. Probability for red color, also 100%. But now can you see that it changed the allele frequency already? Probability of blue color, maybe 50. Probability of red, also 50, for example. Can I see that? So they change the allele frequency, but the change of allele frequency due to gene flow can actually reduce the, the chance of speciation. If there is no constant gene flow, uh, gene flow, there's high diversity between two gene pool, so speciations may take place, and developments of the new species take place. Okay, so for example, okay, why is new species? Because they cannot interpret anymore. Blue one cannot recognize the red one as the same species. The red one cannot recognize the blue one as the same species because they do not know they are the same species. So they don't interpret. Therefore, they won't be able to, to, to stay as the same species. And we, know, we, we say that speciations now take place. Okay. Yeah? So stop recording before we go to Hardy Bean Birds.